Hey everyone, welcome back to Radio Free Disciple. Well, I should say welcome back to me because I haven't been on Radio Free for a while. Hey, Kyle. Kyle and uh, of course uh, Evan is here as always. Yes, well, always. I, I think you've done one RFD without me. Maybe I don't know. I don't like to do it without. Oh, Evan sweet. by my side. So uh, that whirring, whining noise you might hear in the background of this broadcast is our <laughs> is our air conditioner. We were too lazy to turn it off. So well, also welcome. It, it's just been ridiculously hot here these last couple of uh, days mm-hmm. and humid, and so I pretty much think that the whole floor would hate us for turning off the air conditioner. So here we go. So there you go. Uh, we got a little bit of ground to cover. Uh, first of all, I think we should talk about the con you just came back from. Holy cow, the two cons. Well, well this you guys is true. We discussed talk. Origins last right, right, week, right. although well, if you yeah. have any personal stories to share about Origins. It was busy. Such as being thrown in jail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, yeah, we won't talk about that. Um, as far as the second... Klingon jail, the, uh, by the way. Second, Not uh, real jail. Uh, <coughs> the second convention we did was yes. uh, Tim and I were out at Anime Expo okay. in Anaheim, right by Disneyland. As a matter of fact, uh, we could see Disneyland from the hotel. It was pretty cool. It was like, hey, there's the Matterhorn. Uh-huh. Hey, there's you know the California Adventure that sucks anyway. Now... So, a lot of our fans probably are not familiar with Anime Expo. Right. Actually, we did see some people that we hadn't seen in quite a while at Anime Expo that are big into anime, so that was kind of cool. And we mm-hmm. had uh, some volunteers there, and we were demoing Dot .hack on the Bandai booth, okay. so that was pretty cool. So uh, what was that experience like? Different um, from one pr- of our normal shows? <laughs> okay, yeah, it was different. Check this out, too. <laughs> you know, the Bandai guys have never really had, like, gaming going on on their booth, so they were just, like, you know, happy to have us there, and they were great hosts to us and everything. Uh-huh. But, you know, they put us right next to the karaoke stage. There's a karaoke stage. There was a karaoke stage on the Bandai booth, which was really cool because, you know, everybody's getting up there and singing the theme songs to all the, you know, Bandai properties. Uh-huh. And uh, badly, by uh-huh. the way. Uh-huh. And uh, so it it was it was interesting, um, but we were having to yell over. Um, well, mainly our two volunteers that were there. They did uh, most of the work. Uh, Tim and I were also out making contacts and talking uh-huh. to pu- publications and things like that. But uh, yeah, they were having to yell over the karaoke. And then every once in a while, <laughs> they would decide to like throw out free T-shirts off the stage, uh-huh. which would suddenly there would be you know it would go from 15 people, 20 people hanging out around the stage to like two or three hundred people right. hanging out around the stage and knocking over our signs and. People were even jumping up on the demo table. Outrageous. You know, right in the middle, while we're trying to do demos, people would jump up on the tables to, like, try and catch T-shirts. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so there were some challenges that we faced. Yes. <laughs> what a very diplomatic way of saying The other fun one was uh, Tim Ellington uh, was able to give a demo of Dot .hack to a um, six-foot-two black man in a Sailor Moon outfit. So okay, that was and and for those of you familiar with Sailor Moon, we're not talking about uh, a man, uh, the tuxedo. We're, we're <laughs> talking about one of the sailors. Yeah, we're talking about yeah, one of the girls in the uh-huh. skirt. Yeah, very very. Yeah, it was it was interesting. Uh huh. Tim had fun. I'll bet he did. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, but you know, interestingly, uh, interestingly enough, that guy really liked the game, and he kept coming back throughout the throughout the weekend and wanting to just play pickup games. Cool. So that was pretty cool. The game was really well received. The, the Bandai people, you know, were really impressed with how busy we were the mm-hmm. entire time. As a matter of fact, they said, "Man, at the next shows, we're going to have to give you guys more room because you, cool. know, you could have definitely handled all of this." So, um, yeah, it, it was uh, it was a lot of work, a lot of fun, um, and and a lot different than, right. than the traditional gaming show that cool. most of the people listening out there would uh-huh. have probably been to. It was really cool, though. There's so many people dressed up in costumes. That's like a big deal for the anime shows is dressing oh, yeah. up. So um, they have masquerade parties. And so you'll be getting a little bit closer back to our normal swing next week when well, you head back out to Comic-Con. Actually, Comic-Con is, it is a is little, a little bit It's a little bit... Cl- it's like a mix between a game show or a game con and an anime con and a you know media con. 
Um, but Bandai is going to have a booth there, so we're going to actually be fielding two different areas. We're going to have demos going on on the Decipher booth and the Bandai booth again. Cool. So. You can go to either place. Then. Yep. Yep. So Very that nice. should be fun. Should be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so, so then I'm back in the office for a week, and then we're doing two more shows. Yay! Crazy. Uh, Comic Con and Gen Con are on their way. That's right. You go straight from one to the other, don't you? That's right. Well, that's what I did with the other one, pretty much. I mean, I was home for like a day, but uh, yeah. But now we're doing two back to back again. But wow. this time it's like the entire team doing back to back shows. So, um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun though. Um, all the preparations are being finalized um, at these late hours. Um, you know, the last minute details are being uh, tightened up, and uh, it's looking like it's going to be really fun. And that's why you're looking just a little frazzled. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you out there, Evan kept coming by my office today going, can we do RFD now? And I'm like, come no. back later. Can we do RFD now? uh I got to make these calls, and I'm waiting for this, and I got to do this thing, and uh, come back later. Uh, can we do it now? Uh, no, but let's go do it. <laughs> so yeah, it's been really busy. The marketing team has been really slammed because we've got, got a lot all of these stuff shows going on, you yeah. know, on top of the shows too. Uh, getting word out for Dot Hack Enemy. That's right. Um, uh, creating the organized play yep. for Dot Hack. You know, Dan is right now juggling that and all the major tournaments that are going on right now. So. Everybody is completely swamped right now, especially in marketing and, wow. and sales. So busy, busy. Uh huh. Um, what else can we talk about? Well, uh, as people are aware, uh, Star Trek wise, uh, all good things was unfortunately delayed for a week. We talked about last week's broadcast. Uh, we were saying look for it next uh, Wednesday. So this is really quite a last minute surprise delay for us as well. So let me uh, say again. Look for it next Wednesday, and, and uh, hope that that's uh, better this time around. Um, we have received our approvals for the Call to Arms cards, which Excellent. means in the not-too-distant future, information about that will uh, start trickling out there. Very cool. I uh, thought I would share that with all of you. Um, also, I, I know some people had expressed some concern slash interest in looking at the pro- product calendar that was recently uh put up for Lord of the Rings and speculating about some of the stuff that's not on there. Um, there's not a lot of detail about future Trek sets or or future dot .hack enemy sets or anything like that, RPG products. So um, I can at least speak to the Star Trek CCG side of it and say that we are putting plans in place for a first quarter 2004 Trek set that we just haven't quite got enough details pinned down right. yet to put into that schedule. And you'll find the same is true pretty much for all of our products. There's there's a lot in the works that just is not specifically on that schedule yet. Can we call it Project X? Well, you can call it that, or you can call it, um, like, Dragon Lords Battle War. <laughs> um, we noticed at Origins that... 95% of all new products have either the word Lord, War, Dragon, or Battle in them. So we hypothesize that the ultimate name for a product would use all four of Dragon those. Lords, Battle, War. Yeah, and there's many combinations there, too. So uh, we, we are thinking about the set after Call to Arms possibly being named Battle Lords, War Dragon. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's only a working title. <laughs> Boy, then you guys just really missed out on, like, Energize. Where is that? Yeah, Call uh, it kind of came from left field. But, uh, you know, we've, we've we noticed. We do have Battle of Helm's Deep. Yeah, and we have Lord of the Rings. So, you uh, know, we're, we're, we're just as guilty. But uh, but we didn't name Lord of the Rings. So. No, we didn't. Uh, so I guess Star we can't. Wars. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you see how that works? Crazy. Uh, so, uh so there you go. The, that's the key. If, if you out there are thinking about like maybe pr- publishing your own game, I would highly recommend that you look into those four words. Uh, <laughs> anyway. They seem to be the most marketable. They, they do. So uh, there you go. Uh, also, and, um, at the shows, we have some celebrities coming to Gen Con. Yes, we do. We should mention our um, Gen Con celebrities here before we uh, right. head out. Sean Astin, John Reese davies and Brad Dourif. For that those of you that don't know who they are, they are Sam Ganji, Gimli the Dwarf, and Grima Wormtongue. So. And uh, also Brad Dourif appeared in an episode of Star Trek Voyager. A couple That's of them That's uh, right. played Lon Suter. So That's you've right. got a, and, and of course, John Reese davies also played Leonardo da Vinci mm-hmm. in a couple of Voyager and episodes. And Sam Astin was in Goonies. Yes. So there's lots of oh, card-sighting uh, opportunities. And uh, uh, Brad Dourif is the voice of Chucky. 
<laughs> yes, that's also true. Uh, not not entirely related. He was the the Zodiac killer in Exorcist Three. Yes, A- actually, uh, or was it Exorcist Two? Exorcist Three. Okay. Uh, but uh, he he's played a lot of wackos, sure. actually. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. Uh, but there's lots of card signing opportunities for you if you want to bring them. All right, now here's the really cool thing. Um, Brad Dourif is going to be at the award ceremony for the world champion, and he's going to you know do a really cool thing and present the world champion with the world championship trophy. Excellent. And we were and we were kind of laughing that you know in the in the uh-huh. story he's grinding uh-huh. you know and he tosses the palantir down and smashes it. And we were right. like right as he's going to hand it to the world champion he's going <laughs> to smash, smash the trophy on the ground. <laughs> Uh, now we've told everybody, though. We won't get a genuine reaction. Oh, but that'll be... Nobody, it'll, nobody listens to RFD. Come on. <laughs> it'll be brilliant. <laughs> All right. Oh, that'll be funny. I, you know, I, I don't think that's really going to happen. No. But, you know... But it'd be we funny. We can laugh. Sure. So. All right. So uh, with that, I will let you continue your preparations for the next weekend show. All right. I'm out of here. Uh, everybody out there, have a great weekend.